So as we move into our third and final day of Science 30 Physics review, we actually have a lot ahead of us. The physics component of Science 30 is broken into two general outcomes, but those are subdivided. Now there are, for the first outcome, 12 knowledge outcomes to Science Technology Society and four skill outcomes. Similarly, for the second, we've got 11 knowledge, three science technology society, and four skill outcomes. The skill outcomes are lab work, difficult to review just in this purely visual medium, and similar issues are there with the science technology and society, so we are just going to focus on those 23 knowledge outcomes, and we will move through those hopefully in just a couple of minutes each. So in our first outcome, remembering that a field is a property of space around a mass, an electric charge, or a magnet that causes another mass, electric charge, or magnet introduced to this region to experience a force. Now we talk about a specific region. All three of these forces have infinite range. So really, once you have a mass of any kind, you have a gravitational field that fills the entirety of the universe. It may get incredibly weak as you get very far away, but it's there. In fact, gravity is the weakest of all forces in nature. That's why we don't notice it until it's coming from something the size of a planet. We rarely feel the gravitational attraction between ourselves and, say, the pencils that we're using. Now, if you have an electric charge, depending on whether it's positive or negative, you'll have two different directions of fields. Remember, the, the field lines for an electric charge are in the direction of a small positive test charge. So if you have a positive charge, it's going to be repelled from another positive charge and attracted to a negative charge. Now, the way that's drawn, it looks like we can have intersecting lines, but we can't because that would imply that an electron at this point or a small positive test charge at that point of intersection would go two different directions. And that's not the case. So when you have multiple bodies, you actually have to combine the fields. And you build them according to the way that positive charge will go. So it'll be repelled from the positive and attracted to the negative. Now, if you're straight in the line, it'll go out. This distortion gets less and less pronounced as you get further and further away, especially when you're on the far side of the object. But we do get these field lines curling in on another when we have a positive and a negative charge together. We'll have the same sort of an effect with a magnet. So remember, magnets always have two, two poles on them. There's always a north and a south. So even though we draw the field lines according to where a north monopole, as they call it, just one pole would be, if you had a little thing that was just north, how would that go? Well, that doesn't exist in nature, but we pretend it does for the purposes of mapping out a field. And while an electric field, well, electric and magnetic fields extend to infinity, but with magnetic fields, you get bigger and bigger closed loops as you get further and further away. Whereas with the electric field, a single charge can produce a field to infinity. A bar magnet or any magnet will always have a field that wraps around and closes in on itself. It's actually similar to what we had with the positive and negative electric charges there. It's just a little more rounded. So these are the basic review concepts for that magnetic charge.
and the magnetic field.